Hello, 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 and today I have a new tutorial for you. This one is, is a shorter one, but I think it's a very effective one because I'm using it again in my newest project. Um, so yeah, it is knob sheet metal. Um, the only downside of this is you might have to readjust the material when you change direction of your surface. I will test that out because my uh, test that I did beforehand, I only ever put it on like a flat surface, but I will, we will test it out on uh, our various tests already and see how it does. Okay, well then let's begin. First of all, we need a Voronoi texture because this will be where our knobs will be generated. Get this in, control T, we actually need the mapping this time, so we'll keep it, just in case. Um, change this to 2D, let's preview it. Randomness to 0, and we can already see like we have our knobs with this, right? Um, you can now adjust the um, size of your knobs. I'll put it to 10, um, I think this is a pretty nice scale for them, and we'll drag in a color ramp. And just bring this up a bit, and bring this to around here. We can you can make them a bit bigger if you want. Uh, I think something like this is quite nice. And now this immediately can go into the bump map. Um, so let's just bring in a bump. Tag normal, normal, color, height, preview. You can immediately see we start getting our bumps, right? We should maybe invert this so that they go upwards. And this is basically our our bumps itself. You could do this with a displacement map, um, would require a lot more uh, geometry, which is why I'm not doing it, but you could. So I'll stick to a bump, but you can do whatever works for you best. And yeah, you can basically adjust how big they are here and how much they stand out. But I like them this way. Okay, then we want to add some detail to the material, right? First of all, I select to one because obviously it's it's metal. It's supposed to, it's supposed to look metally. Roughness we're gonna adjust later, but I found a 0 0.6. If you don't want the roughness map I'm building later, works pretty well. Color you can keep on this, but we will adjust that later as well. Um, and for now, let's get our surface, um, or, or, or map that basically gives us a bit more detail, because this looks very flat, and we obviously don't want that. Then, let's bring in a Musgrave texture to here. And then we need... Control T, let's say we don't need the mapping, object into vector, bring in a noise map, and just drop this into here. This, uh, we can prepare this. Um, basically, we want this on max detail. We want this dimension on 0 0.6. We want this on 1.7. And this is a quite nice map, this is a quite good map that we can later use, or we've also in detail max, for surface imperfections. You will you, you will see in a second how I'm doing it. Um, duplicate this, object into vector, preview this, we change this from FPM to Hazel Terrain. We can bring up the scale a bit, this basically defines how big your, um, uh, how big your um, surface imperfections will be later, so I'm just gonna put in like a 20, I think. Oh, sorry, that's detail. You can max that out. Detail, you can max out. Um, uh, dimension, I mean 15 is max, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit lost at the moment. Um, dimension, down to zero. We want that to be as small as possible. This can go to a two again. And we want the scale to be a bit... Oh, what do I want? 5.5. Again, scales depend on your object, not on my object. This is a test object. It's it is, it is one by one, one meter, I think. Let me check. No, three, three times three meter. So this is very large. Um, do the scale like it works for you. 
not like it works for me. I know I'm saying this every time, but it's important. Color ramp to here, select those two, control zero, change this from mix to darken and bring this up to one. Now you can basically control how much you want. Um, I would rather have less than more, so I'm gonna keep this at probably something like this, maybe even less, so something like this. Probably will work quite well. Um, and we can now take this and just select it, bring it up to here. Yeah, I apologize for the, for the micro stutters, by the way, the screencast key add-on is creating issues, which, again, is a bit annoying. Color ramp. This will be uh, this will go later in our, into our main color. So this basically you're gonna use to um, give the metal the color that you want. So I'm probably gonna something like this. Yeah, very low con contrasty. Probably just gonna flip it as well so that you have. Oh, do I flip it? No, I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it this way. Um. Then, let's bring in a third Musgrave texture, just for details. Let's bring this up to here. Preview. Control T. Delete the mapping. Operate into vector. Scale. I had a 15 in my other thing, but probably here we're gonna keep it at like a 7. Detail max as always, dimension zero, and this can go to 1.8. Now we are going to use this as a, as basically a factor for another color. So we're going to just gonna mix these two. This goes into there, and this goes into here. Now we can just adjust this color to give us a bit of details. Not a lot, like you don't want this to stand out a lot. So I'm just gonna keep it at this. Um, and next, we just have to integrate them into the bump maps, and then we're done. Like I said, it was a very, very short tutorial. Uh, so this is color into base color. Preview it. I think it's a bit dark, so I'm probably just gonna make this a bit lighter. More like here. Oh, that works quite well, I think. Yes, that works quite well. Okay. Then we basically can duplicate this color ramp here and put this into the roughness. And for the factor here, we are going to take the top map that we did. Just give it some sort of imperfections. Yeah, something like this. And then, obviously, for the final part, we are gonna duplicate our bump, put this to 0 0.4, and then from the height map, we want basically basically this. So we can drag and drop this into here, and then we just need another color ramp here. Just order it a bit, because like this is obviously like way too contrasty now. Color ramp. So just drag and drop this into here, and now it's like we want. And now you now you have a pretty nice map that you can use for any grow material, like. Oh, Probably gonna clean this up a bit because this looks a bit messy, but yeah, this is basically the whole material. I think it looks quite nice. We can see if it works on other objects too. Let's bring on this cube. Uh, and that's a shiny plastic from last time. Let's bring on the yeah, like you like you see, it just breaks if you have more than one surface, so you might need to rearrange that for your various surfaces. Yeah, I, I, again here it just doesn't really cope well with it. So yeah, it, it is like I suspected. Keep it on keep it on one um, general area or one general vector 
the, this one here would be the the z vector so you might have to ha have to rearrange it for that but that's fine um i think it's a very very nice material sadly i didn't see any other way of doing it like fully like fully procedural so you might have to adjust a, f a few things here and there but i think it is very nice and can help you in a, in a lot of situations so i hope you learned something today and i hope to see you next time bye bye